Out of the ashes you will rise. If you feel sad, lost, depressed, finances are in the gutter, social life, you're lonely, out of the ashes you will rise. Here in my garage, invest in yourself. Always be curious. Don't be a cynic. Sleeping on a couch in a mobile home with only $47 in my bank account. When everything's burnt to the ground, when you're sad, lost, and depressed, and everything's at rock bottom, you get to rebuild the exact and precise way you want the damn thing rebuilt. Health, wealth, love, happiness, each of these four goals. Okay, welcome to today's episode 103 of the Ty Lopez Show. This is, we're talking about making money. This is the money episode. How to make more money. And I'm gonna talk about a few techniques. We're gonna talk a little on the stock market. We're gonna talk a little on investments, but I wanna talk about how to read people. Because ultimately, business partners, employees, customers, marketing, that's how you're gonna make money. How to get a job that you like, how to interview correctly. It all comes down to reading people, how to business network, all those things you gotta be able to do. And so one of the things that should have taught us in school is how to make more money. Because honestly, who here is extremely excited about the amount of money they have in their bank account today. I got a few people from my office here helping and watching. I got co-host Zachary Cokeman. How, how do you do? Hello. Named after his addiction. And uh, Zach is an addiction? No, the Coke man. Oh. I'm talking about soda, man. Oh, oh, I thought you meant cocaine. <laughs> I was like, I, I didn't think we were going to talk about that in public, but I guess I just let it out. Any man who wears sunglasses in a dark room, like a movie, like last night. Prescription sunglasses. That's even worse. So that I can see who I'm talking with. I know who's speaking to me. And Yeah. Yeah, is there any? I'm going to, I got a little food coming here because I've um, been going for two hours. This is oh, episode. Oh, in that case, I'm going to get my water back. So when Zach, when Zach talks, I might eat a little bit. Okay. We don't have any like little snack things because that's a full on meal. I might sound yeah, okay. bizarre <laughs> to eat. <laughs> okay, let us begin. Somebody said, never trust a French man who doesn't drink wine. Mm. I don't know if that's a good way to make more money, but who here? Let's just do an honest poll. We're going, we're live here. We've been live for the last two hours. We're on the third hour. We're probably going to have at least mm, 100 to 400,000 people watch this live it's hard to know because we're on insta facebook youtube and twitter but for all of you watching later or listening later my question is let's just do it who here either say yes or no yes you got plenty of money is exactly the amount basically realistically you've wanted in your bank account no is heck no i had way better expectations for where i'd be someone said no 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 no, no, no. So far, I haven't seen a yes. Man. Somebody wrote nah. They don't take instructions well. Yes. I found one, two, no, three yeses. Maybe is not allowed. You either are or you aren't satisfied. You're not maybe satisfied. No, no. Negative, kind of. Are you serious? Heck to the no. Somebody made it exponential. <laughs> they, they, did, the they did math. Heck to the no, to the third power. Okay, what they should have taught us in school about making more money, let's start with element number one, making money. And there's so many different elements you can talk about making money, you know, how to start your own business, how to get investors, an idea, how to experiment, how to scale a business, how to do the marketing. But let's, let's start with who here in the last 30 days has sat down and gotten solid, advice on making more money from somebody who makes more than 10 million bucks a year. One-on-one, -on -one, sat down, not just a conversation about the Knicks or the Lakers, raise your hand. Not me, not me, not me. Nope, 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 nope. So here's a question for you. And everybody listening, just ask yourself, this is a very important question to answer for yourself. If you had a choice, you get a check for $1 million deposited in your bank account today, or you get to spend one year side by side apprenticing or interning with Mark Zuckerberg 
owner of Facebook, which would you choose? A million bucks. That's a lot of money. After taxes, you don't got to pay any taxes. They put a million in there. Or you get to learn from your favorite billionaire. It could be Bill Gates. It could be Mark. It could be Steve Jobs when he was still alive. You have a time machine. Somebody said both. Uh, you violate the rules. You get none. So why don't you get the million, somebody said, and then go to Mark Zuckerberg. But Mark, that's not a lot to Mark Zuckerberg. You can't go to him and say, I got a million. Will you help me? Oh, intern. No, but Mark Zuckerberg doesn't offer any internships. Trust me. I mean, he does at Facebook, but you don't work with Mark Zuckerberg. You're in the mail room in office 4,002.8 miles from his office. So it's an interesting question because here's the deal. The reason it's important is I meet a lot of people that say they want to learn from somebody, but they don't inv they wouldn't be willing to invest any money or time really in doing it. They wouldn't really be able to give up or sacrifice. One of the questions you have to ask yourself is how many hours per week you spend around somebody who's 20 years ahead of you financially, not age-wise. They might be younger than you. They might be the same age. They might be older, but they're 20 years ahead from where you are today or where you want to be financially. Let's say in 20 years, you want to have $10 million or $1 million or 100000 in your bank account, whatever the number is. Did you spend, and so I want you guys to put in here as an interesting poll. We got tens of thousands of people, 100,000 people watching this live. How many people spent more than one hour one-on-one -on -one with somebody who's where you want to be in 20 years? I'm not talking about someone doing a little better than you. Somebody said, with my dad. Is your dad where you want to be 20 years from now financially? Is he already there? Somebody said they spent 72 hours. Somebody said, Elon Musk. Have you spent time with Elon Musk this week? <laughs> Banu Gatsby said, I have no friends. I probably shouldn't laugh because maybe he's serious, but I thought you might be joking. Should I laugh, Zach? I, I was actually reading. I was, Zach I, is reading. I stopped listening to you about 45 minutes ago. <laughs> Zach's sick of this. He's heard it all before. My dad is a longshoreman, 160 grand a year. So is that your goal? 20 years from now, you're making 160 grand a year. If so... And he's and in the way you want to make it. So do you want to be a longshoreman? Then it sounds like the right person. If you want to be something else, you know, mm, no. Somebody said they spent time on video, watching videos of people. That's better than nothing. But you can see from this thought process, one of the reasons everybody you meet is broke. Because you broke and you hang out with broke people. It's kind of like uh, in 2012. I had made this goal. I wanted to get a six pack, like really lean. And I was trying all these techniques and it wasn't working. You know, I was getting leaner, but I wasn't where I wanted to be. And then, um, this is at my other house in Hollywood. I up in the Hills, they use it for photo shoots. So this photographer, famous photographer contacted me, said, Ty, I got the number one guest model in the world. She wants to come shoot. Cause you got a view of 35 miles of LA, it's, it's a really cool, I did, if you saw my Snapchat in 4th of July, you probably saw it. So I said, sure, you guys can come. So the photographer shows up, oh, thank you. Shows up with this really famous model girl, who one thing I learned, one thing you'll learn about models, some models look better on the camera and not in person. This is one of them. She was <laughs> very beautiful, when I looked on the camera. I get that a lot, by the way. You got that, Zach, yeah, do you look better in person? Be, no, when people meet me in person, they're like, oh God. Oh, I thought you said they, you look better. Oh, I thought you were oh, saying that look people that. look worse in person sometimes. This is a new look. <laughs> the oil pad look. Um, yeah, point it at Zach once in a while when he's, when he's talking. So is that one of your Tinder strategies? No, I, I thought you said people end up looking worse in person. They don't look as good on camera. So which are you? And I'm saying that happens to me a lot. I show up and people go, oh, God. So is that because because you, I look worse in person? Do you I put a Tinder picture that's like your very best picture ever? Uh, a few of them. Are you that guy that doesn't do the honest recent no, one? No, no, I got some of me Zach got scratching a, my butt. <laughs> no, you don't. Picking my nose. Zach got a 1997 yeah. picture of him on Tinder. Yeah, yeah, I'm 23. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, 
but you could see the problem. And even the school system doesn't solve this problem because even though there's a lot of great school teachers, they didn't make money and even most professors. Anyway, so going back to this photo shoot, um, they show up, it was a whole bunch of models. And then this guy came, um, they needed one male model. So this guy named, he's still a friend of mine. His name's Janelle. And uh, he's now one of the top male models in the world. He moved to New York. He's with, I think he's with Ford now. He's one of the high paid guys out there, I think. And so I was like, I'm gonna apply this principle of making money to other areas of my life, getting a six pack. This guy, if you know how what it is to be a male model, is if you've ever seen Zoolander, you understand <laughs> these guys are in great shape because they get paid and you always look fatter on, on camera so they stay super lean. So this dude was, he had exactly the six pack that I wanted. I mean, he had, press the close there, the power mode. And so we just became friends. And I started to observe, we'd go out to eat, we'd go to movies and I started being like, this dude eats perfectly. And so it was an encouragement and I started eating like him. Sure enough, three months later, I got the leanest that I think I've ever been in my life. Because success rubs off on you. And you got to remember that success rubs off. And so when you think about your life, you got to ask yourself financially, who's rubbing off on you. And almost always every person that I meet that doesn't like their financial situation. When I ask them that simple question, I don't care if you're already making a hundred grand. If your goal is to make a million dollars a year, then how often are you hanging out with millionaires? And if you're already making a million people making 10 million, whatever your number is, your goal might not even be a hundred grand. You might be a teenager watching this. You just want to make $50,000 a year. You, there's something called osmosis in science. Things rub off on us. Osmosis is between cells inside your body. They're absorbed, you absorb. And that's the same thing with your bank account. I promise you this. If you took the million dollars, instead of spending a year with Mark Zuckerberg, you would be making a mistake in my opinion, because if you spend a year with Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg, mark my words, their success will start to rub off on you. Their contacts will start to rub off on you. So now we come to the hard part. And the hard part is, what do you do? When I was first starting out, I didn't know any successful people. And even if I knew them, they weren't gonna hang out with me. So this is a catch 22. People want to hang out with people more successful than them. So that means Elon Musk wants to hang out with people that he considers his role models. He wants to hang out with whoever, I don't know, Jeff Bezos or something like that, or whoever he looks up to. I don't know his role models. But yet his role model, it's, it's kind of like, they call this ladder theory in dating. You guys ever heard of ladder theory in dating? It's one of the most interesting theories. There's some websites where this guy came up with this theory, but I'll tell you what his theory is. Here's the problem with all dating. Here's the problem with Tinder. All the girls, well, let me ask, first ask you this. Have you ever been in love with somebody who kind of likes you, but doesn't like you as much as you like them? Who here has ever gone on a date where you see the person, you interact with them, you're like, that's what I've been looking for. And then the next day you're all excited and you're texting them and you realize they had an okay date, but they're not that into you. Anybody? Okay, let me tell you why. On the ladder, they're one step ahead of you. And guess what? Everybody wants one step ahead of them. So who here has ever had someone attracted to them, but you're not really into them? Oh, God. <laughs> this is Zach's experience. Jeez. If I had a nickel for every, every one, is that your every time. Zach's experience. So here's what happens. Here's what's happening in the dating world, and it directly applies to the business world and making money. All the girls who are sevens have guys who are sixes in love with them, but all the seven girls are in love with the eight guys. One to ten of whatever you consider attractive: personality, looks, body, all that stuff. That's the whole dating world. If you've been on Tinder, guys, trust me. You are swiping yes to <laughs> girls who are one notch above you. They ain't swiping back because they're swiping yes to the guys who are one notch above them. Everybody wants what they can't quite get. And so dating 
because especially in the modern world becomes this whole thing where it's hard to find people who are a seven who will be happy with a seven and i promise you this in the dating world you better know what number you are and some people say no ty loves romantic and loves not number oh bullshit <laughs> Talk to scientists. The brain is an algorithm. It does complex computations. Did you know that you can tell how beautiful somebody is, male or female, from 50 yards with their back turned to you? That's what scientists have found. Where you can only see a like one sixteenth of their face. Let's be honest. Once in a while, you can't see them at all. And you get one of those surprise situations. It's like Ronnie Shirley whenever we pulled into the gas station and uh, at the gas pumps, bending over, pumping gas into the uh, little to-go tank or whatnot. Beautiful, long, flowing hair. And Ronnie Shirley whistled out the window, stood up, and he had a beard <laughs> and everything. This, this is one of our friends growing up. He actually has a TV show now, Lizard Lick Towing, Ronnie Shirley. So, but for the most part, we can tell beauty it, it's, the brain's extremely good at calculating. You don't have to see even see a whole face. So some people will tell you, no, there's no numbers to, no, there's levels to this. You know that? You ever heard that in songs? There's levels to this? There's levels to attractiveness. There's, there's guys a lot more attractive than me, and there's dudes less attractive, and the quicker I come to grips with that, the better my life is. And you don't go off in some fantasy world. Same thing with money. But here's a little trickier. With money, it's even more exclusive of a society. Because when you're broke, I'm sorry, when you're dating, once in a while, you're a seven, and you can get an eight to go out on a date with you. Because she might like something quirky about you. She might like the fact that Zach's wearing sunglasses in the movie theater with her. She might like his red beard. She always had a Viking fetish or something like that. But when it comes to business, it's much more cut and dry. There's not that often that Elon Musk is like, well, you know what? I want to hang out with an idiot. It just, it doesn't happen that much. He wants to hang out with people who are intriguing. I know. I've had very fascinating one-on-one -on -one conversations with Elon Musk. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I know. He's hung out with me. No, I was going to say, <laughs> and he didn't want to hang out with me. No, I didn't. But there's levels to this. So my question to you, and I guess what I'm talking about in today's podcast, is what do you got to do? To convince somebody when you're a one financially and they're a 10 to want to spend time with you somebody said ty i don't date anymore well that's not a good solution if you want more money in your bank account you need money making techniques to rub off on your brain through mental osmosis but we talked about ladder theory the badass people that can teach you they don't want to hang out with you when you're broke i know from experience when i was broke I'd go to conferences and you would see all the successful entrepreneurs would like go off to a dinner by themselves. And it was like the rest of the people at the conference that had just paid to be there. We just kind of off lonely go, going to make, going to subway by ourselves, <laughs> all the losers, you know? And, um, but eventually I was able to turn that around. So let's talk about how to read people. The way you read, the, the way you attract people is to understand how they see the world and then speak to their language. So let me give you an example. If right now you went to China and you never had learned Chinese and you did not have a translator with you and you spent a month in China and you're not a fast learner, how good would your understanding of China be? Even though you might have seen the damn China, Great Wall of China. Did anyone see that Matt Damon movie, Great Wall of China? The dumbest movie, maybe the worst movie Matt Damon's ever been in. Anytime that Zach, was the, that Zach, was for his kids' daycare. That's the only reason. He Zach doesn't that. like Matt Damon's politics very much. So if you ever get in a political debate with Matt Damon, just bring up one sentence: <laughs> "Great Wall of China." Yeah. When he ever, if he ever says, "Zach, you Republicans are greedy," go "Great Wall of China." <laughs> you did that shit for money, son. <laughs> you did. That's not a piece of art. That's a piece of trash. Anyway, so if you went to China, you saw the Great Wall of China. You saw the little landmarks, you went to Shanghai, you went to Beijing, but you didn't speak the language at all and no translator and didn't learn it in a month. How well would you understand China? And the answer is not at all. You must know the language of the environment you're in. And so what happens is when you meet people, I have developed a system called the PACE system, P-A-S-E, practical, action, social, emotional. 
when you meet people, whether they be investors you want, mentors you want, people that are above your level financially that you want to learn from and have mentor and teach you, they might have a style of personality that's opposite yours. It's kind of like their personality style is Chinese and you're trying to speak to them in English and they will run from you. Or at the very least, they will not want to spend much time with you. But, and I've seen this over and over, when I go to foreign countries, I learn at least one sentence because people's faces change totally. If you go to Norway or Sweden or, or England, Zach learns a language in English. England, he learns, what, what do you say? I study before every, every time what I go What do you there. say when you go to England? You, you have a little English saying that you say. Uh, or Australia. What is it? Good day, mate? Or what is it? The shrimp on the barbie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. The good day, mate. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. But or <laughs> now, the barbie. But that's that actually doesn't work. Zach pisses off the Australians because uh -huh. he thinks he's. But if you go to most countries, learn a language, a, a sentence of their language. One sentence will open up doors to you. Now, when you go to around financial people, the language is not words; it's styles. I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Steve Ballmer, I had lunch with in the PAS uh, dinner with PASE system, practical action, action, social, emotional, the personality style. I've met Steve Ballmer multiple times. He's what I call an A. That's action. Okay, action people like to speak aggressively. They like to talk. You can say what you want. They're not easily offended. All those things. So when I have lunch or a dinner with Steve Ballmer just me and him, he's worth almost $30 billion. I could speak in that style to him. Now, Elon Musk is a completely different personality style. He's what I call an E, stands for emotional. He's much more introverted. And a lot of the things you've learned in business books or networking books don't apply. For example, who's heard that when you meet somebody, you should shake their hand, give them a firm grip and look them straight in the eye? You ever heard that before? Yeah. This is the secret to business networking. No, it's not. Because emotional people, ease, it doesn't mean he's emotional like he cries a lot. It's just he's a little more introverted. You get the vibe. You know, he's not, he's not super talkative to strangers and stuff like He is somewhat, but not, he's not very different than Steve Ballmer. If you ever seen Steve Ballmer memes and, <laughs> and gifs on Twitter, it's like, blah. You ever seen that one on the Clippers where he's like screaming on the Clippers? You don't see any of that with Elon Musk. Elon Musk talks much quieter, kind of a little more reserved. So if you meet somebody who's an E personality type that you want to network with or learn from, and you approach them with a stiff handshake and great to meet you, uh, you know, like power networking, they're going to shake your hand and be like, I'm getting out of here. This person's weird. It, you know, in some animal species, in fact, most animal species, Direct eye contact is aggressive. Did you know that they say like, if a wild dog comes up to you or a bear, don't look at straight eyes because that's how animals confront each other. And same with some people, they will see it as aggressive. So I have learned over time by making many mistakes and having a few successes, knowing how to read people and knowing when to speak correctly or, or it, for their style. Remember, there's no right or wrong, it's their style. Because if you're in China, you gotta speak Chinese. And when you're speaking to an, an E person, you gotta speak like an E. And when you speak to an A person, you gotta speak like an A. And this is the most powerful technique I've ever seen. And when I do it right, I've never seen it fail. I've never seen it fail. So this brings us to the question, how do you read the person to know what personality style? And that's a long conversation. I don't even know if I have time in this freaking podcast episode to talk about it but by the way how long is facebook live for can you google it facebook live but i'm, I'm going to give you guys some fundamentals here this is a pretty good little protein shake most people don't get enough protein shakes uh protein is that your uh, pepto bismol special yeah that's my pepto bit this is strawberry zach huh. tomato zach tomato eats so little fruit that when he sees strawberry shake he goes that must be pepto bismol that's why you need pepto bismol because you don't have enough fiber oh okay so we're good okay most people ain't getting enough protein you should get it depends this is huge arguments somebody some vegan was trying to say 
or somebody was saying in a vegan book, they said you only need 7% of your diet to be protein. Hmm. Other people say you need 40% if you want to lean up, but I don't know. I don't know if I, I want to go down that route of arguing about that. Arnold Schwarzenegger told me in person, I was at his house the last two years. He said he always liked one gram per pound of body weight, assuming you're relatively lean. If you're super overweight, that's going to give you maybe a little bit out of whack. I think the U.S. government says something like 0.3 or something pound. So like if you're 200 pounds, you should have 60 grams, whereas Arnold Schwarzenegger would say you should have 200 grams. Anyway, this shake right here has usually about 18 to 22 grams of protein. But all you guys trying to put on muscle, better. Yeah. <laughs> snack food isn't that healthy in the modern world because number one thing they cut out, if you look at snack bars, there's no protein in it. They put corn in every fucking thing. And corn is not that healthy, especially processed corn syrup and all that. So I'm, I'm making my own shake that I'm gonna have for sale soon. I've been working on it for like a year. I've been so busy that I haven't launched it. Okay. So how do you read people to know how to adjust to their personality? So I'm gonna give you some simple, for those of you in my more advanced business stuff, I have hours and hours of this training because this is badass training. This, it's kind of like you wanna be good at basketball, you gotta do hours and hours of training. But I will give you guys an intro to it if you never heard it before. The P personality type practical, just always think slow. There's some people just slow. They speak slow, they think before they speak, they're not, you can't rush them. Sometimes I meet people trying to pitch investors. This, uh, keep, you don't have the battery working there. So I meet people and they're like, Ty, I'm talking to this investor or I'm doing a sales call and the person, they just won't listen to me. I'm like, they're probably a P. You gotta be able to adapt very quickly. That's who survives in the modern world. And when it comes to making money, I meet people that find one system that they think work and they can never change. You know why Kodak was put out of business by Instagram? Because this 100-year-old multi-billion dollar brand wasn't smart enough to fucking buy Instagram. It was only a billion dollars. They have a billion dollars. A billion dollars for them was like, you know, a thousand or two thousand for you. And what happens, this was attributed to Charles Darwin. It probably wasn't Darwin who said it, but what happens in evolution when you don't adapt? What do you, what do you become? extinct and see no matter I don't care any government program I don't care if your mom loves you and she pats you on your head anytime you make a mistake you will go extinct financially if you're not willing to change with the times it happened to true religion went bankrupt this week true religion a billion dollar brand gone gone another company Went bankrupt. American Apparel. American Apparel is no longer owned by an American company. It got bought for $60 million by a Canadian company. Bankrupt. Then sold to a non-American company. Why? They weren't adaptable to change. They had issues with the CEO. They, they in fact, is it, American Apparel did the opposite. Everything was going great. When everything's going great, then don't change. They were killing it. They grew from 600 million in revenue, 900 million. They're one. Everybody knows American Apparel. Every person, especially women, it was a big brand for women who do most of the shopping. So you want to be big with women. If you got a choice between being big with women and big with men, 60 million they sold for at one point. And this is a sad story. I say this with no happiness. The founder was at one point worth $600 million. At the end, he was he said he was sleeping on a couch on a friend's house in Los Angeles. He lives right here. Because that company over-adapted. So there's a time when you want to adapt and time when you not want to adapt. Going back to reading people, sometimes, you, let's say your natural style is practical and their style is practical, P, then you don't have to adapt. You can just be yourself. So that's the time where you be yourself. American Apparel was an example of a brand that had brilliant marketing. I don't know if you've ever seen American Apparel billboards, but they had these ultra sexy ones. I know because a guy I know was the head of marketing. And then he quit and that company disappeared. They should have gone, he lives in Texas, they should have gone to him and said, we'll pay you 10 million bucks a year to not quit. 
but they were cocky. When everything's going well, don't change the team. It's like the Golden State Warriors this year. They just won the NBA Finals. They're trying to keep everybody. They're keeping Durant. They're keeping Thompson. They just signed Iguodala. If anything, they're adding more weapons. They're not getting rid of any of them. Some of these teams are stupid out there. Some of these owners and stuff. When you got a formula that wins, don't adapt. But when you're not doing well, adapt very quickly. So for those of you financially not doing well, I can tell you when I wasn't doing well financially, it's because I was stuck in my ways. I was stubborn. And I wouldn't get with the times and change up what I'm doing. And so the second you become adaptable with reading people, all of a sudden people want to start being around you. You know what I'm saying? They want to be around you. Somebody said, Ty, you should invest in my logistics company. Maybe. So what's another example of a company that recently didn't adapt? Vine and Meerkat. Meerkat was a live streaming app like what I'm doing right now. They didn't change with the times. What it's, did they not do? Well, Meerkat, I don't know the exact story, but so I'm going to guess, and I could be wrong. So Meerkat was an app like Periscope. It was an app like Facebook Live. It was a lap. They should have probably sold to, and then maybe they tried. I would have tried to sell to Facebook because the second Facebook's getting ready to do it, once they do it, people are going to stop using uh, Meerkat. And that's what happened. Vine didn't adapt. I mean, basically, people didn't want to use uh, Vine was only what six seconds. I never yeah. used Vine much. Okay, that's too short. Sorry to break it to you. You ever try to do a Vine? Shit, it's like a cinema. You have to be a masterpiece and cut it four trillion times. Facebook started out with fifteen second ones, and then Facebook adapted. Facebook. I'm gonna tell you this. Mark Zuckerberg is one smart dude. Uh, I would not mess with Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg is like getting in a street fight with Conor McGregor, or you know Rome. You know, it isn't going to end well. Even if you win by the hair of your chinny chin chin, mm -hmm. you're going to have broken nose. All your teeth are going to be gone. There's no winning. And so Instagram sold to Mark Zuckerberg. And then was a lot, the, the founder, Kevin Systrom, is still there at Instagram now, developing the product. And Mark Zuckerberg has a lot of trust in him. And Mark Zuckerberg can fund any idea. It's a good guy to have on your side. Mark Zuckerberg's now one of the wealthiest people in the world. Hmm. Amazon's putting jokers out. They just bought, they just bought, who, who knows what they just bought? They bought Whole Foods for, I think, what was it, 14 billion or something like that. And Amazon, Google what Jeff Bezos net worth is. 80 billion. This dude is younger than Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and almost caught up to them. Jeff Bezos is a machine of adaptability I mean, this guy is even worse to compete with than Mark Zuckerberg. I would say the two people I wouldn't want to compete with right now, first is Jeff Bezos from Amazon, and second is because not only are they very smart, but they got money. They're like a bully who not only is aggressive, but is 350 pounds of lean muscle and bench press 600 pounds and is a pro boxer, kickboxer, MMA fighter. You're in big trouble. now. Let's go back to our original thing. We're talking about how this applies to you personally. Well, it applies to you personally because you need to get around people. Maybe not Jeff Bezos. He's going to be hard to reach. Maybe not Mark Zuckerberg, but you need some mentors in your life and you got to be putting in the time to find them. Mark Zuckerberg, you, who knows one of the defining moments for Mark Zuckerberg? What happened? Because Facebook, if you know the story, started really, I think, around 04. Didn't, like, they crashed it at Harvard and they were looking at Harvard? Yeah, so they were at Harvard. That was a defining moment. He basically launched it to get girls. They thought, I mean, that's one of the theories. I think Mark Zuckerberg denies that, but he's married. He probably got to deny that. Come on, tell his wife. <laughs> he built his business. <laughs> so I, I don't know the exact, it's hard to know. There's a lot of rumors, but I will tell you what we do know. There was a point... I think it was between 2004 and 2008 when he launched it. 2008 is when Facebook really took over. It's when they launched their advertising platform. They started to monetize. I know I was one of the first people um, fortunate enough to be monetizing Facebook. 
and doing Facebook ads back in 2008, 2009. What happened in between? And they had a crisis. Facebook was by no means going to become the company that now has 2 billion customers. They have 2 billion registered uh, users on it. That's almost, do the math on that. That's basically a little under one over one out of three people in the world are growing, uh, are, are on Facebook. And he reached a crisis that he didn't, before all that success, what did Mark Zuckerberg do? Who knows? Someone said bought Instagram? No, that was like in 2013 or something. So he said, met with Sean Parker. That's a correct answer. He also met with a decent businessman named Steve Jobs, the founder of Amazon, which is the number one company in the world. Steve Jobs, the founder of Amazon, you said? Of Apple, thank you. Oh, okay. So the founder of Facebook was lost. He was a young guy in his 20s. What did he do? He turned to more successful people and he began to do business networking and hang out with them and ask them questions. And they helped him, Steve Jobs, Sean Parker, gave him advice that helped him uh, help Facebook grow through growing pains. And I don't know where you are in life, but you might be experiencing financial growing pains. One of the ways you get out of your financial growing pains, you gotta be humble enough to go to some people that are more successful with you, speak in their language. If they're a practical person, you need to speak slower, put less pressure on them. If they're an action person, you can get hyped and be all crazy. If they're a social person, an S person, you need to be funny and jolly and lighthearted. It looks like Facebook. What happened to Facebook Live? Am I, is it streaming for you guys okay? Yeah. It's frozen on the screen here. It's frozen? It's frozen? Oh, there, it's good now. Is it better now? And then if they're an E, an emotional person, don't be so aggressive with them. Let them come, be relaxed, be introverted. And that's very, very important for each of you. You learn this pace system. Um, somebody said the floor is lava. Zach, the floor is lava. <laughs> I'm not falling for that again. Well, you can just lift your feet up. <laughs> oh. Zach didn't want to even do that. <laughs> Zach, is, is your mom here? Hello. Hello. We've been telling Zach stories. <laughs> Zach's mom is here. <laughs> what? Here to make sure I, I stop doing what I was doing on the first two podcasts. Zach, stop swearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get yelled at tonight. Zach's mom's visiting. Here's my. She comes to visit, and I this still is get Zach's it. effect on his mom. His mom's most common phrase is Zach, <laughs> you're representing the family. <laughs> Does Zach always represent the family correctly? No. No. Oh, Zach, you need a family mentor, man. Okay. Um, somebody said that is so funny. Let's take some questions. That's why I want to talk about the pace. Let's take some questions. We'll start with the room. If anybody has questions on reading people or just in general, making more money, get money in your bank account. Money's not everything, but you will never be financial. You will never have freedom if you're completely broke. Money's not everything, but you will never have real freedom if you're completely broke. It just doesn't work that way. If you look at the causes of slavery and poverty and things like this, part of it, it removes freedom from people, which creates a, a self-perpetuating cycle. We're wrapping up, and I'm taking questions from the live audience here. And I'm taking questions from you. This is the mo making money session. Any questions? I've talked about how to use business networking to make more money. Get more money in your bank account. No freedom when you have no money. Trust me. I have gone through different phases financially. I have been in the phase of making $10 a month. And then I've been in the phase of making $10,000 a month and then a hundred thousand and then a million a month and beyond. So I empathize with you if you're struggling right now, but I also got to give you the tough love that somebody gave me because I could just empathize and just say, you know what? The world's unfair and it is unfair. And I could tell you that the government makes a lot of mistakes and the government does make a lot of mistakes. And I could just tell you that the system is rigged that the rich get richer, and that is true. The rich do get richer. And I could say that there's some Illuminati people. I don't actually believe in that. Although 60% of people on my Twitter poll think I'm in the Illuminati. But I have to ask people, do you think I'd do a Twitter poll if I was actually in the Illuminati? <laughs> <laughs> 
you think a mafia guy is going to do a Twitter poll? Uh, I'm in the Sopranos. Do you think I... So, Should I feed him to the rats or give him the cement boots? <laughs> give him to the pigs. Um, so, yes to all of those things except the Illuminati. I don't believe in the Illuminati. There, there's no Illuminati anymore because there's iPhones. And so people would just record it. Trust me. So probably there was an Illuminati about 50 years ago. The Facebook phone needs to inch a little bit more. Oh, is it? No, no, the other way. There you go. So all those things are true, and all the excuses about why we're broke are true. But my question is, so what? What are you going to do? You think you, the government's going to change over? You think politicians are going to suddenly become people who care about you? They haven't really cared about us ever. Maybe George Washington or something, Abraham Lincoln. And I'm not saying all presidents are bad people, but what I'm saying is, in general... People care about themselves. The sooner you learn that, the happier you'll be. I promise you, Obama or Donald Trump, if you couldn't pay the rent, ain't writing you a check. They're just not. Maybe they'll make a government program that kind of helps a small amount of people, but I found the best thing to do when I don't like something in my life is try to work on it myself because I'll pay the most attention to it. So what questions do you have Related to money, we're taking, we've got about a couple hundred thousand people have been watching this live, and we have people in the room. So we'll start with people in the room. No question is off limits. No question's too dumb. Um, try to stay on the subject of money, but uh, we never go where the, we never know where these sessions might go. First question, grab the mic, introduce yourself, what you do. These, some of these are employees who work for me. Some aren't back there, but yes, introduce yourself. All right, my name is Kyle. I work in uh, customer support and uh, oh, hold put the it real close, close to your mouth. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle and I work in customer support. support. <laughs> um, um, my question, question is, is, how beneficial, beneficial has the rule of thirds been um, in both your personal and business development life? So the question is, as far as money and the rule and of thirty-three percent. This, if you've seen my TEDx talk, I gave a TEDx talk and I basically say. You should spend 33% of your time around people below your level of success, 33% of 33% of the time around people on your level, and 33% of the time around people more successful than you. And that is kind of what I was talking about today about reading people. The hardest 33% is people above your level, and that is probably the number one thing that people don't do or learn. So I would say it's. 50% of the cause of whatever success I've had. Some people are a lot more successful than me and some are less. So at least 50% of it comes from other people giving you their insight. Good question. Next question. And we can bounce around and have to go in order. And then I'll take some here on live too. If you see any good questions, let me know. Uh, hi, this is Brian. I'm also part of the marketing team. team. Um, I would, I would just have a general, general question on, on how, how to manage, manage money, money better. better. Like, what, what are, are like, like your three top, top tips on managing money? money? Three top tips practically on managing money. Money handling tips, money making, just practical stuff. So I'd say the first thing is set up some kind of automated withdrawals from your bank account into another bank that you can't get uh, access to very easily. So let's say you have Bank of America or whatever. Go to Chase, open up a bank, and then set a bank account, a savings account. Burn the debit card that they give you. Burn the credit card, and don't make an online login. Why? Because then it's a pain in the butt to go get that money. You got to go to the bank. Then just start with whatever you can, auto drafting out of your main bank account. Ten, even ten bucks a month. At least it's the mental habit that's being formed, you're changing the neural pathways in your brain. You set up this auto withdrawal out of your main, let's say Bank of America is your main one. You take 10 bucks a month or a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. You send it over to this other bank account that you can't get freaking access to. And that, of course you could theoretically go to the bank and walk in in person and some people will do that, but at least you're getting in the habit of forcing some savings. On that note, you asked for three tips. That was number one. Number two tip that I would say is 
create even more forced savings. So another type of forced savings is um, buying something, okay? That could be a house, that could be a car. I don't care if it, just something you're obligated to do um, that's building value. So you can buy a house. A lot of people don't realize how easy it is to buy a small house nowadays. Now, I'm not guaranteeing you this is gonna make you rich because it's not. Buying one little house, but it's gonna teach you some things. You can buy a house in most places, even Los Angeles County. If you go outside the main city and you go out to Riverside or you go out to, if you're in San Diego, you go out to Temecula, you can get starter houses for 100 to 200, let's say 200 grand, which sounds like a lot, but the bank will give you money for it. And there's a lot of, depending on your situation, there's sometimes government assistance in the form of special loans for first time house buyer, meaning you don't have to have the best credit. And sometimes you hardly have to put any money down. Like, you know, sometimes zero. It used to be easier to do this, but you can still do it for especially, you can't do this if you try to buy a hundred homes because investment properties, banks lend money differently. You usually have to put a big deposit down or you have to get private investors. But buy something that for, because a home, even though it won't make you rich, is a great for saving program, okay? You could do it with a car too. Cars don't hold value as much, generally, unless they're collector, but they help you build your credit. And so you get a car, you know that I saw downtown by the Laker game, you could get a car. There's a, by the Staples Center, there was a car deal all last year, a hundred dollars a month. Man, a hundred bucks a month, you can get a job at McDonald's and afford that. And cars, the only thing different about cars versus houses, with cars, you don't need such great credit because they'll repossess the car if you don't so they got their they have their basic what you call surety they have they're sure they're going to get some value back because they'll take the car back so i i think for savings because a lot of people will tell you don't ever go in debt well that's not true a lot of people have you just have to have smart debt there's dumb debt and smart debt and sam walton the richest man of our time 160 billion dollars he's dead now but he's richer than bill gates he's richer than uh mark zuckerberg he's richer than jeff bezos from amazon he was in debt till he was 60, but it, but he used the debt to build buildings. He built one Walmart, then he went to a bank bar, and it forced him to not spend the money on stupid stuff. He was investing it in things that had potential to make him more money. So I think that people, you know, if you're making $2,000 a month, buy a house, buy a small house. Now, maybe on that note, let's say number three, how do you make an investment like that? Cause you could be scared, but here's the beautiful thing about houses. Now get some roommates, buy a three bedroom house. You live in one room and rent it out for 200 bucks a month. If you do no contract rentals, just do a background check on the people. You can do background checks. Make sure you ain't getting somebody who's going to murder you or something like that in your house. But you just do a simple background check. There's companies that do it online people that will even do it for you you buy a house for in some parts of the country like las vegas you you could buy a house for 30 grand at one point 50 grand if you live in iowa you can buy houses for 50 grand buy it you get a lot of tax incentives in the u.s tax code legally the irs gives you lots of tax breaks for home ownership especially a home you're going to live in if you try to do investment stuff some of this stuff doesn't apply and that comes later but get yourself a home and then if the money, so let's say just approximately, let's say, um, and this is not an exact, well, let's do it online. I'll show you how to do this. Everybody pull out their phone, go to mortgage, just type this in, mortgage amortization table, uh, calculator. Mortgage, it's a fancy word, it'll fill it in for you. Mortgage amortization calculator. And this will help you calculate how much this is gonna cost you. So mortgage amortization, the first thing that comes up is bank rate. They always come up in Google for some reason. So you just type in, let's just say, because we have people in different places, let's just pick, put $150,000 in, or this comes a default of 165. Let's do 165,000. You can get a 30 year loan and current interest rates are roughly 4.5%. By the way, you can buy a house when you're under 18 legally. You got to have your parents involved, but it's completely legal. 
as long as you do it legally. So you could start, they're one of the richest men in America, J.R. Simplot, was it H.R. Simplot? J.R., I think it's J.R. Simplot, before my time. But this dude was buying farms at nine. At nine, he bought a farm. <laughs> he had sheep, he, ra he took all the sheep that were sick from farmers, so he said, I'll take them for free. And these farmers were like, great, I don't have to feed them, these are sick sheep, so they gave him, he ended up collecting whatever, 10, 20, 100 sheep this guy has, which is awesome, right? Then he nursed them back to health one by one because he was nine, didn't have anything to do in the summer, took all of them, sold it, made enough money, he bought his first piece of land. He said he had two employees in, his, in their 30s when he was nine. <laughs> he said it was hard to get them to listen to him. He was, he was, he was, I, I think and give me a peanut butter sandwich. Yeah, he was, he was under 12. He might not have been nine, but he was under 12. I remember that going... And by the way, this guy died one of the richest men in history. In fact, he used to love to buy farms and land. Buying land is great. You buy land, you do it right, land's always valuable, especially if it's good land, not swamp land or something. So this guy, he used to fly in his airplane later, fly over farms and land all across America, to, and he'd go, ooh, that one looks pretty from up here. So they landed in one field, he gets out. He he would he was so rich. He just sent other people go knock on their door. So they they landed like in the middle of a field, one mile from the farmhouse. They walk. This is like in Montana or Indiana or uh, uh, Idaho or something. They walk, knock on the door. Then they come back to the billionaire and they say, "Sir, you already own this farm. This dude owed so much land he could fly." For a long time and not find stuff he didn't know. I think he died with a million acres he owned. A million. So a lot. Or some crazy coup. And that's America. Like you could buy a million dollars worth of Australian desert land for probably 50 bucks. But it's desert, right? Not really 50, but he bought good land. And he started under 18. That's another problem in the system. We all start. I didn't start till I was out of high school. I should have started when I was young. Young people are smart. I'm no smarter now than I was at 14. And scientists have found that your IQ peaks at 14. People argue with me. I'm like, you are an idiot if you argue with me. Why? The IQ test that's most commonly used is called the Stanford Binet test. It was developed by a guy named, I think, Alfred Binet, B-I-N-E-T. He invented the IQ test and he said in his findings, your IQ peaks at 14. I always love with people who argue with me that know nothing. They haven't read a book in four years, but they're very sure. We all know that guy that's very sure about sports, but this dude couldn't make a basket. I remember when we were at this, we were at, me and Zach were at a, a game. Uh, this is the oh, Spurs Clippers game in the playoffs. Well, what year was that? 14, 2013? Uh, 15. 15. Zach's is the year guy. <laughs> There's a dude in front of us that knew nothing about basketball, and he finally pissed me off. First of all, he was so loud, he was disturbing everybody. And he was calling everybody down on the floor by their, by their nickname. Nickname. So I had to sit here. I'm not even a Clipper. I like the Clippers, but I'm a Laker fan, but I'm an L.A. fan. This dude, I had to hear two hours of this guy going, Timmy, good job, Tim. I, finally, I was like, dude, you know nothing about that. I could hear what he was talking about. Dude, because he was, people were getting up and leaving. I was like, shut the fuck up, man. You don't know basketball, and you don't know Tim Duncan. Don't be calling him Timmy. And he turned around, and he goes, well, how many rings do you Clipper fan have compared to me? I said, you have no rings. No, no, he said, you he, are, said, what he, said? he said, look at all the Clipper banners. Oh, yeah, he was making fun because the, the Clippers so don't have any rings, and he's talking about how his <laughs> spurs. I said, sir, you have no rings. <laughs> you are not a player. You are in the stands. Anyway. Don't get me started on this thing. But. So if you're under 18, get your parents' permission. You can buy a house. There is no law. America, that's one good thing about America. Some of you watching from other countries like France is like, fuck, it's messed up. It's complicated. No one, that's why they have 30, 20 to 30% unemployment. Part of the reason, not all of the reason, but part of the reason that they're having just as many shootings as America but they only have a small percentage of the population is because when people are unemployed, they get desperate. You know, a lot of ISIS stuff is poverty. Poor people commit more crimes in part because their backs to the wall and you put people's backs to the wall, they want to get money or they want to take revenge on people who have more money than them. So 
one of the beauties of the United States, and a lot of countries are this way, there's no law at what age you can start. You can start, the founder of McDonald's, Ray A. Kroc, started at 52 years old. He started McDonald's. He was a traveling salesman to his 52. There's no law on how old. You could be an old person and never have done that well financially, and you can end up, he became the richest man in America. And on the flip side, you can be very young. And like I said, you got to follow a few more rules. You do need, in general, you need your parents' permission unless you're like, you know, Pippi Longstocking and you somehow are <laughs> declared independence. Can't you do that now under, under 18? Yeah, you get a lawyer. I don't know about all that, how you do it. But the beautiful thing is, look at this math. You put in the calculator, you can buy homes in the United States, a lot of them for $165,000. You get a 30-year loan, it's amortized out, so every month you pay a little interest and you pay some of the debt of the bank. Right now you can borrow money at 4.5%. That means you can get a house that costs you $863 a month. That's not that much. So if you have a job making $2,000 a month, generally banks will let you loan roughly 25 to 30-ish percent of your income. So if you make a $2,000 a month, they'll generally let you get a house where the payments are eh, around, you, to get this house, you probably need to be making more like 3,000 a month. But 3,000 a month is not that much money, okay? People in this room, you're making more than 3,000 a month, right? So everybody here, you could, and remember, you can buy a house even where you don't necessarily live um, if you wanna do an investment, but it's better to start out with a home that you own. And then 863, so here's what you do. You get a two bedroom, a three bedroom house. You take the smaller room in there. Cause look, when you're broke, don't try to live like you're rich. Now I got a room, master bedroom above this place is bigger than any place I ever had, I think growing up. I think the square footage on my master bedroom now is bigger than the mobile home that I lived in. It's probably 1700 to 2000 square feet when you count the bathrooms. But when I was, when I was starting out, you do what you got to do at the beginning. If you don't have money, take the smallest room, rent the other two rooms out. A great, great, if you want to be safe with roommates, if you get a place near a college university, get some female grad students. Because grad students, they need to study all the time. And get females, because let's face it, men are more crazy. When it, If I had to have a stranger in my house, but to, I mean, there's some crazy women, don't get me wrong. But if I had to have a choice between Bubba and Betty that I never met sleeping next door to my room, you know, I'm taking Betty because I want to wake up <laughs> and you got Bubba drinking with the axe murderer, you know, pose on top of your bed. I like so, where you're going with this. Get a house and then get two female roommates. There you go. Or you could That's, use like uh, Zach. You could use that as a dating tech. No, don't do that. Actually, <laughs> I know guys that do that. It's a horrible technique because. Don't mix your money with your dating. Get a good renter in there. So let's say a lot of people don't have good credit. So you could charge them um, and, or they're just staying for a temporary amount of time or even longer. And you could rent them a room for 400 bucks a month. Now that two people in your place, that means you're paying $36 a month out of your own money for the house. Now, sometimes there'll be vacancies, so it doesn't quite. Sometimes I, I'm looking at a house that I can buy right now and I can rent it out and positive cash flow, make $5,000 a month profit. So that means people are paying the mortgage for me and I get an extra five grand. Now, that's harder to do. That's not as common. But with this right here, you can do this. And guess what? Here's an advantage. It forces you because you have some debt to be responsible, it forces you to not be an idiot with your money. When all your other friends are going and spending their money on stupid stuff, you're like, no, nah, man, I got a house, I got an investment. And then here's what happens. You use smart with your money for a year or two, the bank starts raising your credit. TransUnion, Equifax, these credit companies see, oh, Zach pays his bills. And, and they start raising your credit score. Now. I got a guy right now WhatsApping me who I met. Uh, people come up to me all the time just at random places and have business pitches. And this guy, I've been following him. He, he's, I like this kid because his, I like his business idea. Basically, he's 
this is crazy. He's not even buying property. He's going around the world, America. Now he said Netherlands is great. So he's getting paid to travel the world. He rents places and he tells the landlord, I'm going to Airbnb this. Will you let me? You got to ask him because if you rent it from him and there's a clause that you can't sublet it, then they can kick you out. But he tells him up front, I'm going to Airbnb this, but I'll be responsible for the damages. So he Airbnbs. He doesn't even own the house. He puts it on a contract. Then every day, every month, he sub leases it or Airbnbs it with the app Airbnb. I just said, how much money you made? He said, Ty, I've made $250,000 in the last six months profit. And I'm now currently, you know, 250,000, I think in the last year, he's currently netting $9,000 a month while he travels the world after all his expenses paid. See, that's with a little more complicated strategy. This strategy I'm talking about is a great one. And most countries, I know, I got a guy in my real estate program, me and Cole Hatter, he's in um, Sweden young guy in his early 20s, he's made $20,000 a month. Got a guy in Texas, Jose, I flew him out here. You've probably seen a video on my Snapchat. This dude made, thir uh, he's made 30,000 in his first, I think two months. He's, for, he's a Mexican guy, I think all his family's from Mexico. He said, nobody in my family has ever even seen 30 grand in a month. He said, my family laughed at me when I started doing it, and he said, now they respect me. <laughs> Things start to change. People who laughed at you before, trust me, you start, you throw a few stacks up in the air, people go from laughing to asking if you're hiring. Hustle till your haters ask if you're hiring. It's a powerful principle. So going back, this is a long answer to your question. I'm going to take one more and then we're done. <laughs> Armin's asleep, falling asleep on me. But this is good content. I record it one time. Then I'm way better at night, unfortunately, for uh, speaking. But this is helpful, right? This is a practical strategy. Even we, we have two people under 18. Uh, Andy's here and his two kids are here. You guys could do this. <laughs> what? Just make sure I'm over 18. Andy's over 18. Did you? <laughs> Andy wanted all the, available, all the single women to know that he's available. Um, so I'll take one last question. And let me take this question from the live cameras. Someone said, Happily watching from the Philippines. Someone said, Ty, take me as your apprentice. Bring this a little closer to me so I can. Questions, and then we're going to give away this iPhone 7. I resell high end clothing such as Supreme, Bape, making money sporadic. Well, you need probably either to expand the business by getting other people running it for you so you can move on and do another business, or if you got the, it's only part time. If one thing stops making you money, it's time to move on. Okay. How do you remain positive when things don't always go great? Is that a good question to answer? Uh, the person <laughs> clearly doesn't have things going great, and now y'all <laughs> all go. Uh, well, the youngest person in the room, how old are you? I'm 14. For Andy's daughter. Andy's here and his daughter's 14 and uh, she liked, she want, she shook her head yes to that. So this is related to making money and I'll tell you why. They have found that things like depression, anxiety, um, fear are negatively correlated with financial success. Okay. That means if you're, who here has ever been depressed, honestly, even temporarily, raise your hand. Okay, if you've ever been depressed, it's hard to do anything. Like you could hear a good idea, like we're talking about how to invest maybe in your first home, things like that. If you are mentally out of it, you can't do anything. And one of the big break uh, realizations, scoot it back to you a bit for that, that I've realized from doing a lot of social media, you, could, you know that you can just see, Sam. You don't have to ask, there you go. So that's not good. No, no, no. <laughs> There we go. There, that's fine. That's good. That's good. One of the big um, revelations I've had over the last two years when I've really done social media, I think I've reached over 200 million people just on Facebook, actually, but in terms of people seeing videos, commenting, interacting, things like that. Um, what I've found is that depression, fear, and anxiety is a way bigger issue than I realized. Because I. I tend to be kind of like a 
high energy person. So I don't, I don't, I, that's, I've been depressed and anxious before, um, but some people have it bad. So I'm not an expert on this. Um, and I, but I, I have had enough experience to give maybe a few thoughts on this. And this is very, if you want to make more money, you got to have energy. That I know for a fact. Scientists have proven over and over. In fact, a lot of wealthy people have what's called hypomania. Now, it sounds worse than it is. Hypomania is not an actual negative disease. It's not hyperactivity, but it's similar. Hypomania is the ability to like lock in and do stuff for a long time, years, weeks. When most people give up, you're still like, ah. And so my cousin Maya says I have hypomania. And when I first heard it, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then I read about it, and I was like, oh, it's not that bad to have. So the opposite of hypomania would be like depression. Not exactly the opposite. They're a little bit different, but they're similar. One of the classic symptoms of depression, if you read about it on any textbook, I buy a lot of textbooks, medical ones, anything. I, I, I'm curious. One of the number one symbol, uh, symptoms a doctor uses to diagnose depression is have you lost energy? Have you lost your will to do stuff? Have you lost your motivation and ambition? So whether you're, like I said, I'm not an expert on depression, but I know that you need the opposite to really make money because to make money, to go out and buy a house, your first one, you got to have a little energy because no one's going to do it for you. So you got to have the will one day to get out of bed and go, well, this sounds crazy and none of my friends have done this, but I'm going to be the first one and I'm going to go do it. Well, okay. Or I'm going to start my first business, right? If you're completely depressed, you're not going to do that very well. So sometimes depression is medical, meaning no amount of books, nothing I could say will fix it. Sometimes you need a doctor and they got all kinds of complicated things they do nowadays that I, I know not of, Zach, <laughs> you were saying. But, but some class of people, some percentage of people, it's fixable, it goes away on its own. That's also in medical textbook. A good bit of depression goes away over time. And here's my advice. If you are depressed, number one, it goes back to what I said before. Don't hang out with depressed friends. You notice in high schools, like goth people or like people who are kind of like depressed. That's kind of like that. They only hang out with goth and emo people or whatever. I'm like, no. Now, you could obviously have some, but if you're in a social circle that's only like you and you're not pushing yourself, you're not going to get the rewards. And so what you got to do is say, all right, I'm kind of a depressed person. I'm going to have a few friends that are kind of like me, and I'm going to have a few friends that are the exact opposite, that are always bubbly. And here's what happens. Depressed people see always bubbly people, and they're like, oh, they're an idiot. They don't understand what I understand. Well, good. You want the people that don't understand your worldview because you don't always want to be around people who have the same worldview as you. I try to surround myself with super Republican people like Zach. Super Trump lovers. Rome, as you guys see, who's around here a lot, he hates Trump. I mean, I actually get scared sometimes for <laughs> Zach because Rome is big, 315 pounds, and I could see... Zach saying his little things. And if it was, <laughs> if Zach wasn't friends with Rome, you might see a man flying through the air. Rome's one of those dudes that could toss Zach. We could do one of those, you know, those midget tossing things. <laughs> we could have a Zach tossing thing. Is it not right to say midget? Sorry. Small person toss. I don't know what the hell it's called. Mexican midget toss. Person shorter than me toss. Yes. Um, it's a safe way. But I like to be around a variety of people. I have some friends that don't care about money at all. Um, you know, I live with the Amish for two years. The Amish are very, they're not anti-money, but they are very Christian. So they think they're very much that money is the root of all evil kind of thing. Not exactly, but... You don't talk about making money around Amish. They're much more around f about family and other important things. And so the average Amish person probably makes 20 grand a year. And as you grow up, you're not necessarily encouraged that you need. No one talks about becoming a millionaire or anything like that. So we've got two minutes left as we're wrapping up the Instagram. And so when you change your social circle, whether you're depressed, whether you're broke, huge results come. If you don't know anybody that could 
that would help you change your social circle for whatever reason. You can start with online stuff. I was watching YouTube videos the day of Ray Dalio. He's the $20 billion man. I could watch free YouTube videos. I also hire people. I got paid trainers and consultants, whether it's for my body, for my brain, for my business, that I'm also spending money on. So you gotta do a combination with the modern world and technology, you can change yourself. Even you guys watching live or listening later on the podcast, this is you changing your environment. A hundred years ago, you couldn't do this. If you lived in a little town in Nebraska or a little town in Sweden, you weren't gonna interact with somebody here in Los Angeles. So use the tools that are available to you. So I wanna thank you guys. And by the way, my new entrepreneur program is just launching. It's the Entrepreneur Starter Kit. I don't even know if I have the link on my website. I sent out an email. If you're not on my email list, go to tylopez.com. I send stuff first there. Get first act. I'm going to give you 20 business ideas. I had 10. Now i got 20 businesses that you can start, how to start them in under two months. In fact, I want you to start them in two weeks. For those of you who want to launch a business, I'm going to give you 20 business ideas. Where eventually, I'll have 30 in there that you can do full-time or part-time, no matter where your age is, where you live. Watch for that email. Watch for it on my Snapchat too. If you're not watching Snapchat, Snap I post to first. So you want the first chance to win at Ty Lopez. And by the way, I'm giving seven people a hundred bucks. I've already given three people. Somebody said massage parlors are good startups. I think that's what Zach should do. <laughs> the Zach Cookman massage parlor. No, I tried that in the South and it didn't go over so well. If this man came out looking like this to give you your massage, tell me that wouldn't be a money making idea. That's a, with that face. That's right. <laughs> Get my stretch on. All right, everybody. Goodbye. Podcast. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, but do me a favor. Leave me a little podcast review. If this is something new you haven't heard before. Then, uh, you know, the more reviews I get, the more I'll do it. If it ain't helping anybody, I'm not going to do it. So talk to you guys soon. Mm -hmm.